On February 10, 2024, we at Lyle Station Historical School and Museum go back to the Civil War and the men who fought to keep the country united. Alonzo Fields wasn't the only member of his family to serve his country in some capacity. His mother's father, Jasper Simpson, served in the 14th United States Colored Infantry Regiment, with that recognition noted on his headstone in Sand Hill Cemetery. This infantry regiment, active from November 1863 to March 1866, was organized in Gallatin, Tennessee, commanded by Colonel Thomas Jefferson Morgan. They engaged in battle at the Second Battle of Dalton, the Battle of Decatur, and the Battle of Nashville. While the 14th Infantry took part in battle, many African-American soldiers were relegated to non-combat duty, serving as cooks, laborers, and teamsters. Initially, they were not trusted with weapons, and when weapons were assigned, they were inferior to those assigned to white soldiers. As a whole, they suffered racial discrimination, were paid less than white soldiers, and faced enslavement or worse, execution at the hands of the Confederate Army if captured. In December, the Infantry Regiment contributed to the defeat of the Confederate Army of Tennessee, pursuing John Bell Hood's army across Tennessee. They fought side by side with white soldiers and died side by side with them. Following the battle at Dalton, Georgia, in August of 1864, as the men marched into town, Colonel Morgan wrote that the regiment of African-American men was recognized by white soldiers as soldiers and their equals, writing, After the fight, as we marched into town through a pouring rain, a white regiment standing at rest swung their hats and gave three rousing cheers for the 14th color. Colonel Morgan recorded their bravery and service in his book, Reminiscences of Service with Colored Troops in the Army of the Cumberland, 1863 to 1865, revealing, Some of them had very noble ideas of manliness. I remember picturing to one bright-eyed fellow some of the hardships of camp life and campaigning and receiving from him the cheerful reply, I know all about that. I then said, You may be killed in battle. He instantly answered, Many a better man than me has been killed in this war. When I told another one who wanted to fight for freedom that he might lose his life, he replied, but my people will be free. Colonel Morgan recruited Private George Alexander, who served in Company 1. Many of the men who enlisted had been slaves, among them Sergeant Isaac Ike Dalton, who joined at age 18, and Corporal Abraham McGavock, who enlisted at age 24. These men were literally fighting for their freedom, as was Sergeant Charles Tyree, who enlisted in December of 1863 and fought in the Battle of Decatur, where he was wounded. The regiment, formed in Gallatin, Tennessee, included many local men from Williamson County, men who had been, for the most part, young farmers when they enlisted. Sergeant Henry Johnson Maxwell, a free man born in South Carolina who had lived in northern states, joined abolitionist George Luther Stearns to organize USCT regiments. Following the war, he returned to Charleston, where he was elected to the State Senate of South Carolina. While Maxwell was well-educated, the men he recruited were not. Of the thousand men in the 14th Infantry Regiment at the time of their enlistment, only 50 could read. Colonel Morgan and the other officers remedied that situation by providing them with an education. Writing in his memoir, in addition to the ordinary instruction in the duties required of the soldier, we established in every company a regular school teaching the men to read and write, and taking great pains to cultivate in them self-respect and all manly qualities. Our success in this respect was ample compensation for our labor. The men who went on picket or guard duty took their books as quite as indispensable as their coffee pots. While they first set about learning the alphabet, they looked forward to studying algebra and philosophy, intent upon acquiring the education 
they had been denied. The men of the 14th U.S. Colored Infantry Regiment proved themselves in battle and in life. We salute them.